Are you calling for your cub? See, that's a contact call for her shadow. She's busy looking for the cub. And I'm not too sure if the cub is on top of the mound. <gasps> it is! The little cub is on top of the termite mound, so they're both here. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Pardon? Uh, I don't I don't know if you'll be able to. I'm gonna try going forward. Sorry, Seb. I think it's just a bit of a tricky one. So if you look to the top of the termite mound to the right, that little yeah, that bundle there. <laughs> yes, no, I know, that's why I thought you couldn't see it. Sorry, I got a bit carried away there because I'm slightly forward. Is that the kill over there? There it is. You see, I think it's eating a scrub here. So it should have been good with the scrub here than the little one. If it is a scrub here, but it looks like it. Well, hello, youngster. I think this is the only, uh, only the second time that I've ever seen it. Clearly, mom has been doing a fantastic job of keeping it safe. And at least I got lucky with one of the sisters, because I think Tandi and Tamba haven't been too friendly. At least to me, but you know, if they were being chased by Tingana yesterday, I'll forgive them. But very nice to see this tiny little one. How special is this? And the camouflage. My goodness, the camouflage is amazing. We, if guys hadn't told us that they were here, imagine how easily we could have just missed them and missed all this fun. Someone's hungry. Hello. Oh, precious little thing. Appetite, hey? How big of a leopard of you? How cute is that? You <laughs> see, the instinct is kicking in, and it already knows exactly what to do with its kill and what to do with it and how to carry it. So, as soon as it felt like there was another. It grafted it around. Ash is what? You're wondering if the little one has a name yet. Um, no, it doesn't have a name yet. It's still a bit too young to have a name. Um, so I think with Shadow it's always good to wait <laughs> for a little while, see how she, how her cubs do because she hasn't been the most successful of mothers. But um, the little one has gone all the way back down on the termite mound. Maybe perhaps it's retreated into an area where it feels like it's a bit safer. But there's mother shadow looking, looking quite sleepy. Nothing to worry about. And she was calling it earlier. So I wonder if maybe she wanted it to bring down the scrub hair that it caught. <laughs> Pretty. This is wonderful. <laughs> So lucky as well that she she caught it and she kept the cub right next to the main road so that we could see it. But great great work girl. Seems like you've been doing well with the scrub hairs. You see any she's only got a small cub and and just the one. So uh, that little one will be able to have a very good meal out of that scrub here. Even something like a mongoose would still be a good meal for it because it's not that big yet but we when we we're looking at it earlier voracious appetite so I think maybe Shadow is a bit tired she could probably have been moving around the whole evening just to try and, and succeed and catch one of these little things or maybe she caught it just in the early hours of the morning and now she's probably gone down for a very well deserved rest Still 
quite alert. Her ears are constantly moving around. Mario, you're wondering if the baby's teeth are strong enough to chew through flesh. Um, they are. They can probably uh, crush through thinner bone as well. Maybe just not the, the bigger bones. But little leopards, uh, when they're about maybe six to eight weeks old, that's when the mom starts introducing them to meat. So this one is already a few months old and she cannot sustain it just with the milk. So they need to start eating meat and the more they eat it then well clearly they're gonna learn how to um, wangle their way around <laughs> the different body parts and how to get to the good meaty parts that there are but yeah definitely can and I don't know if you saw earlier it grabbed the little one and or the little scrub here and then it took it all the way back down so he's got a quite an understanding of what to do are you calling for it yeah, she's still calling for the cub. You see, and she, every now and again she goes like... Wah, wah. That's her looking for it. No one likes me. You're wondering how many months the the little one needs to be looked after. So, with leopards in general, most mothers will stay with their young ones until they're about maybe a year and a half, two years old and then once they have their next litter then that's when they'll become less tolerant of their older cubs and start pushing them away. So I would say this little one has got at least another year under its mother's care. Still a while. However, we have a very unique case of two younger leopards who are actually half-sister and half-brother of this one that we're looking at that um, their mother seems to have gone missing and they have done a fantastic job at surviving. I think they were a bit too young when they when they had to start being on their own but they've done a great job at just pretty much staying alive and looking well. Hello Shadow. Uh, um, yes? Okay. Alright, uh, I'm just going to, I don't know, okay, I'm going to move so that they can move around. She seems to, to the, so the cub is behind of that termite mound and I think maybe she's just gone, you see she's still calling for it. So we know that it's not far away because we saw it recently, but I think she's just, you know, pulling out the mom voice and be like, I said, you need to come here. So she's definitely smelling where the cub was on top of the termite mound and I'm sure she can see it. Very regal of you up there. Beautiful. Unfortunately guys I cannot go around to have another view of her and the cub because they are in a property we do not traverse with called Hoffmans. And she seems to be spending a lot of time in between Hoffmans and Juma going up and down the main road. But at least she's been wonderful enough to choose from here. There we go, looking for the cub. Naughty cub, not paying attention to mom. I'm sure she can smell it. I think it's just on the other side of the mound because that's where he, it seems that it dragged the... Ah, there we go, up to mom. <gasps> well done, no paying attention to mom, well done, jumping around and I think she's just grooming from what I can see. Oh, hello. Look at all those fluffy spots. Yay. Oh, someone wants to play. Oh, hello. now coming up and down the termine mound. I think, are you cold shadow? Are you? Ah! Was that the little one running down? I just saw a flash of spots. Yes it is. He's running. It's running. Well she's running because it's a girl not a boy. You see? Very good mom <laughs> having a, a glance in that direction like where are you running to? Come back. It's now time to lay in the sun and warm up. Stunning girl. 
think the little ones just drag the kyo into a bit of a thicker bush and it's playing up and down there. So when she couldn't see it, that's when she started looking for her once more and just making that contact call that rah, rah. Hmm. Look at that camouflage. I mean, you can barely see the spots. Our Lara Moore, you're saying just way too cute. I agree. How stunning was it when it came and you know just stood for that split second out in the in the sunshine? <gasps> I thought it was too cute, and it's still at that stage where they just look so fluffy and sweet and tiny and you know full of nonsense because it came up as like a oh, fine mom's calling. Okay, here here I am, here I am. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> and <laughs> went back to where it came from. We can't actually see it from here. I think it's just uh, in some of the thickets not too far, just a bit headed in that direction. And well, Shadow is still up there just behind the trees or what seems to be a um, raisin bush. So we're gonna stick around here for a bit longer, see if they come back up. And while we do that, let's go to Byron, who's still searching for the wild dogs and hope we are playing hide and seek and now we're playing Jenga or Legos with the rest of the cars that want to go through because she's chosen a spot that's a bit tricky for everyone. But she, Shadow is still standing there and the little cub seems to have gone off. Sorry guys, I'm going to have to move just to make some space for some of the cars to move around. So if you just give me one second, I'm going to be able just to make enough space for everyone to move around. And at least... Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna take a little while because obviously now new people know that there's a leopard there and they want to see it. So hopefully they'll carry on moving for for a little while and then we'll go back to where we were and have a look at them. Hello, very pretty little things. Mita, you're eight years old and you're saying that she's playing hide and seek. Indeed she is, and now she's actually moving. She's she's left the, the termite mount. So I'm gonna try and move around, see if perhaps we can see her again. Because she's come down, hello, and she's uh I'm sure she's heading towards the cub or wherever it is that the cub might be. I can't see her now and the grass is quite long. Oh there we go, right in the open. How dummy of me. There she is, in the middle there. Hello, beautiful girl. We're looking for your daughter. Yeah, she's still making soft contact calls looking for them. Or, sorry, looking for it. There's only one. I wonder if perhaps it's not down there in between that fallen over tree. Would be a good spot for, for her to be in. She's... The Mantuan is there now, I can see it to the left. Uh, okay. So I think maybe if you go slightly forward and look in this way. I see the tail of the little one to the left. So now it's gone down, but just slightly left from where you are, you see that branch? Yes. So that's where I saw the tail flicking for the youngster. But I can't see it now, but I'm sure it's gonna, it's gonna come back up again. It's tricky because sometimes we just pick up the movement. Jason, you're wondering if the guides follow the rules for the for any sighting, especially when there are little cubs or anything else. And the answer is yes. We are a lot more strict when it comes to to cubs and little creatures around. So, for example, this one is a few months old, so it's been viewed by many vehicles at a time just because of its age and how long it's been exposed to, to vehicles. But when they're a lot younger, we limit the amount of vehicles and the amount of time that we spend with the little ones. So for now, they are quite at a distance from us and we are following the rules of what happens when we have a sighting at a boundary, which limits the amount not only of how many people can see it within the, um, the inside of the, of, the, of the reserve where she's in, but also from, 
from the side of the road. Just because, obviously, well, you can imagine, we just want them to be and to feel as safe as possible, and we don't want to have them, uh, we don't want them to have a negative experience, because if they did, then maybe they would just um, not feel all that well and start becoming quite skittish. So we want the little one to be just as relaxed with the vehicles as the mother is. But in order to do that, we've got to be quite ethical and, and look after the little ones, which I think it's it's only a fair thing to do. Hello, girl. So we had a bit of a Jenga now, in case you were wondering, and that's why your, your question came through, because there were private vehicles that wanted to get out of the reserve. But because we are on the main road, they bumped into us. So they just pretty much... We all had to reshuffle, they moved past, and then they carried on, and still not too many of us here. I haven't been able to see the little one again, so I'm sure it's hiding in the grass. Dear watcher, you're wondering why she doesn't stay with her cub. Well, she is. The cub is just hiding a bit to, to the left, and to the, the thickets over there that you can see on the screen. So it's a bit tricky to try and find it, but uh, they, she is very, very close to where it is. So she is actually looking after it, and she actually brought that kill, because that cub is, is a bit too young to be able to, to, to survive on its own. But she is, um, normally now what will happen is she would leave it on its own for a couple of days, even if she needs to, uh, until she manages to get catch something and then it will bring it back to the little one to have a good meal. Or if it's something a bit too big, maybe bigger than a scrub hair, then maybe she would come to the area where she, just, where she last left the cub and then bring the cub back to the kill. But for now, she is right, well, not right, right next to it, but in very close by. I don't think this cub is even more than a meter away from it. We just can't see it because it's a very thick vegetation. And I mean, if you see how much we're struggling <laughs> to even have a clear view of her, imagine something that's maybe a third of the size of this one. Beautiful. I'm going to carry on waiting, see if perhaps we get one last glimpse of the little one. But while we do that, let's go to Byron and see how the wild dog chase is going. Well, it seems like Shadow has decided it's been quite a long night already, so she has gone down and it's very hard to see her and we haven't had another glimpse of the little cub. I'm sure the little cub is not too far around, probably just having breakfast, what, what mom brought around. There we go, there's your head. Just saw another face now. I'm getting confused and I don't know if it's... No. I was looking at Shadow all along. <laughs> I thought maybe that was another head for the little one. I'm sure it's still not too far, but I mean, you can see how long the grass is and how easy it is for a tiny little cub just to go down. And it would be pretty much impossible to spot her. I mean, look at that. Incredible. I think this camouflage will never stop amazing me. Just how easily, I mean, if you just close your eyes and have a quick glance, you'll likely even struggle to find it again on the screen. Or at least the little one was looking quite playful. Jenny, you're wondering how we can tell a female and a male leopard apart. Well, there are some very obvious genitalia in the case of a male that you can look at um, if you look at them from behind. Um, but other than that, if that's not available in your field of view, then you can you can uh, just judge by the size. Normally females are a lot smaller than the males, that's why sometimes we confuse them with young males. But uh, the males, as they start growing older and then become a lot more territorial, they develop this dewlap. There's, it's almost like a, an extra flap of skin or the, the skin around their neck becomes so much bigger and thicker. It's almost like they've got it hanging there. So that's normally a good indication that, that we're in the presence of a male instead of the one of a female. Females tend to be a bit smaller, more slender looking. And 
I, we realized this cub was a female because of the lack of very <laughs> orangey fluff balls. <laughs> She's tired, I wonder. It's, there's a very good chance that she actually just caught this, um, the hair that she had during the night or early hours and she's walked all the way back from wherever it is that she made the kill, all the way back here to where she last left the cub, which is at a certain distance from she was last spotted yesterday. So very likely she's just going to stick around here for a while longer, enjoy the company of the cub and maybe they'll move into a bit of a shadier spot as it starts becoming a bit hotter but I think she was not impressed with the cub it almost seemed like it wanted the cub to come back to the termite mound where it was nice and warm and the cub was just busy playing and being full of nonsense oh. now there she is calling for it again Maybe she's even lost the cub in all this thick bush. <laughs> Beautiful girl. Maybe the cub's gone a bit further back. And the cub is still small enough that, you know, mom's voice is a good command. And if she calls, it'll like, maybe it'll take its time if it's feeling a bit rebellious, but it will always come back to mom. <laughs> and I think that is it. Completely out of our field of view now. She's, all she had to do was lay down on the grass like this, and then we just can't see her anymore, which is quite amazing of how well they camouflage. I think we're gonna leave them now. We've had a fantastic view of them. And I think maybe let's just leave mother and cub to enjoy a very well-deserved breakfast. But let's go over to Byron, who's got some funny-looking warthogs.